It has all-round benefits for the entire body. It's a very simple and complete process by itself. Put your feet together and squat, which most of you cannot do right now. Very few people can do. Twenty-one is a good number to do. If you cannot do that, start with seven. You will see it will make a phenomenal difference. Ultimately, whatever, whatever you wish to do in your life, how much clarity do you have is all there is, isn't it? About anything? Yes or no? If you don't have clarity, you will try to make it up with confidence. <coughs> confidence is a very poor substitute for clarity. It's like uh, there's a busy highway, Vehicles are moving at a fast pace. Your vision is not clear. You bring confidence. You can... Uh, you can refer to your horoscope. You know, you have a horoscope. You can refer to your horoscope and say, my horoscope says I live for ninety years, nothing is going to happen to me and just cross you may make it. Or uh, use one of your slogans which will bring you confidence. You can say Jai Sri Ram, you can say Allah Akbar, Hail Mary, whatever you want, whatever works for you. Loudly shout the slogan and run across. It may work just by sheer chance or because of the compassion of some driver. But every day if you try it, we know where to pick you up. One day you can make it with confidence. So confidence is not a substitute for clarity. If you want to do anything successfully, you must have clarity, isn't it? If clarity has to come, the most important thing is your spine should be in a certain condition because your perception is largely handled there. The spine is not just a physical substance, it is a communication network, a serious communication network. If you lose it, or if it becomes insensitive, you don't know what you're losing. You're just losing something phenomenal. So it's not just a physical substance. It is the basis of communication that's happening in the system, isn't it? The spinal cord is… N I mean the spine is not just one single piece, it's many complex assembly. Every day it needs to stretch. If it telescopes into one into another, then the communication capability in the spine is hugely lost. So, this yoga namaskar, it activates the lumbar region of the spine in a tremendous way, strengthens the muscles along the spine, giving it a reinforcement so that as one ages, the collapsing of the spine, which causes pinching of the nerves, does not happen. And if already there's damage is setting in, the best way to regenerate your spine would be by doing yoga namaskar. It has all-round benefits for the entire body. Yoga namaskar is a very simple and complete process by itself. A natural upsurge of energy will happen if you just keep your feet together and sit down in a squat. So the squat is best if you can put your feet together and squat, which most of you cannot do right now, very few people can do. Uh, we don't want too much energy to happen, so the next best stance is to keep your feet in line with your shoulders, just the same width as your shoulders. You can do up to twenty-one. Twenty-one is a good number to do. If you cannot do that, start with seven. It's 
slowly, every two days, one extra, if you do. In about forty days, you will be at twenty-one, which is a good number to do. You will see it will make a phenomenal difference in the way you function. If there is some way to gauge your intelligence, the sharpness of your intellect, you will see you can see a difference happening. Just because you're doing a simple few things to relax and activate the spine. The video discusses the importance of clarity in life and how it impacts one's action and decisions. Sadhguru talks about the relationship between clarity, confidence and intellect. He emphasizes the significance of having a clear vision and understanding in achieving goals. What is Yoga Namaskara? Yoga Namaskara is a very simple and complete process by itself that nurtures the physical, psychological and energy dimensions of a human being. The simple action of bringing our two hands together is a way of creating a harmony to the entire system. Yoga Namaskara does not involve introducing any major discipline in your life and does not restrict you in terms of time, diet or lifestyles. The simple practice needs no equipment and can be done just about anywhere. The increasing prevalence of mental illness can be attributed to a multitude of factors. The rise in mental health issues can be attributed to the dismantling of crucial support system without adequate replacements. It is essential to empower individuals with the necessary skills and resilience to navigate life's challenges as simply removing supports can lead to detrimental consequences. It is imperative to address this issue before individuals reach a breaking point. For an extended period, we have relied on a certain factors to provide us with mental and emotional stability. However, these factors are now being stripped away. And one of the most significant losses is that of family. Family has always offered as unwavering support. Regardless of the circumstances, they stand by us when we make the right choices and withdraw when we veer off course. They have been like a safety net during our tumultuous journey, catching us whenever we stumble. Sadly, this safety net has vanished for many individuals today, leaving them vulnerable to the harsh realities of life. Consequently, people are expressing immense strain and despair. In the rich tapestry of Indian culture, there was a time when substantial portion of the population, approximately 30% compromised monks. These individuals consciously choose to embrace a life without family, without support and without a permanent abode. The homelessness was not born out of deprivation but rather deliberate decision. Astonishingly, none of these monks were succumbed to depression as they had transcended the need for a safety net. Therefore, it is essential for us to recognize the significance of a family and the immense impact its absence can have on our well-being. By emulating the resilience and self-sufficiency displayed by those enlightened monks, we can find solace in our own strength and navigate life's challenges without succumbing to despair. Let us not fall prey to the cracks in our existence but instead rise above, forging a path of resilience and inner fortitude. In times of crisis, when some turn to medication for chemical imbalances, the concept of finding inner peace and presentness can offer a unique solution by cultivating a sense of tranquility and contentment from within. Individuals can potentially elevate their mental struggles without relying solely on external interventions. Experience the transformative power of yoga for enhancing mental well-being. In essence, the concept of health encompasses a harmonious state of being, where every aspect of our existence is imbued with a profound sense of sensitivity and contentment. When our physical body attains the state, it is referred to as a health, but when it transcends to a heightened level of presentness, it manifests as pure pleasure. 
Similarly, the tranquility and the equanimity experienced within our mind is known as a peace. Through when it reaches the elevated state of bliss, it blossoms into unadulterated joy. The delightful embrace of love develops our emotions when they become pleasant and when they soar to the pinnacle to enchantment. They transform into compassion. Moreover, the very essence of our energies assume the sublime harmony and euphoria, which we call bliss and when this transcendental state intensifies to an extraordinary degree. It is rightly termed as ecstasy. Lastly, the environment in which we find ourselves become a testament to our success when it executes a profound sense of pleasantness. Yoga provides a pathway to connect with the source of creation within us, allowing us to tap into our innate intelligence that can turn simple foods into the integrated human body. By embracing this inner wisdom, we can live a magical and fulfilled life rather than relying on external substances for happiness. We strive to enhance our well-being by relying on external chemicals, with the majority of the population in the United States depending on prescription medication. However, managing our complex bodies from the outside can be challenging. It is essential to look within ourselves for true transformation and access the intelligence that can create a life itself. Our suffering is often a result of our own internal drama, which we have the power to direct and transform. By taking control of our thought and emotions, we can create a more enjoyable and fulfilling narrative for ourselves. Just as we can engineer external comforts, we have the ability to engineer our internal well-being through practices like inner engineering. Through proper scientific methods and steps, we can change the fundamental chemistry of who we are and cultivate a state of blissfulness from within. By creating this inner chemistry of bliss, we can experience true happiness and fulfillment that is inherent to our being. This transformative journey is offered to you through inner engineering. Things you should not do. Why you shouldn't speak during asanas. Sadhguru explains why speaking while in your asana not only disturbs the practice but can also cause great harm to your system. Why you should not drink water while practicing yoga. Sadhguru looks at how asanas can generate ushna or heat in the body. And drinking water during asanas could cause damage to the system. Why an empty stomach is essential to practice. Sadhguru looks at how doing yoga with food in the stomach can inhibit your practice and the upward flow of energies. Narendra Modi is not a dictator. To know the fact, watch this video now. If you find this video informative, be sure to share, like and subscribe for more videos. Thanks for watching. Pranam.